Get out now. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. In our lead story, today, it'll be Armageddon as Goldman warns of an imminent market crash. And Goldman's call is coming as we're starting to see a major sell-off begin to gain steam in the U.S. equity markets. We'll show you why Goldman says the sell-off's going to be even deeper than you think, what they think you can do to hedge your portfolio, and what we think is an even better way. And has Beijing finally stabilized our housing market? We'll show you why some new data suggests another property developer is about to be insolvent. And speaking of Goldman, the CEO is about to take a major risk for the bank, one that we think could bring Goldman to its knees. And while many people say that the global financial crisis can never repeat, we'll show you some shocking data about the U.S. housing market that says it's coming back in a big way. Now, let's go to Goldman where we picked today's story up with their derivatives desk that says you should buy VIX calls. And our volatility model, which is based on five economic factors, suggests that the VIX will average 21.5 in April based on our economist forecast compared to the 13.8 it is now. And if you're not familiar with how volatility works, typically volatility, when it rises, you see equity prices fall in a big fashion. What Goldman's suggesting here is the catalyst for an equity market decline are big and that many people are sitting on gains that they need to hedge before they get wiped out. And what they know is over the past 30 years, the VIX has averaged 19 in April, and we see upside risk to the current low VIX levels given the current macro environment and upcoming macro micro catalysts. And this is suggesting that they believe that the VIX call to be an attractive hedge in case of a pullback in equities. Now, we're going to make the case of why this could happen. In fact, we're starting to see this pick up steam now we'll show you an even better way to hedge your risk because tactical hedges according to goldman they suggest there's market risk here with the s p 500 close to its all-time highs and relatively low volatility levels we highlight attractive options to hedge a potential near-term drawdown in fact we'll give you two catalysts for that one is we started to enter the corporate share buyback blackout window and at a time that's happening as we've noted and we'll update you this on sunday when machine positioning is at extreme longs and any sort of move down, well, that's going to trigger the machines to sell into a low volatility environment. That means equity prices likely to come down in a big way, particularly, as we know, retail investors are all in on this market. And also means that tech stocks will just rally sharply over the past year, and they highlight the most attractive options to hedge a potential drawdown risk. As again, when we look at where investors are in this U.S. equity market, they're concentrated in the magnificent Seven. A lot of tech is in people's portfolio and in a big way. They're taking what's called over concentration risk and it's dangerous. And then there's China, which we're going to highlight, is in not in a good shape as Goldman believes that upcoming election related catalysts can lead to higher volatility in stocks. Forget the election. Well, if based on what's going on in their property market, things are going to get worse for China really quick here. But as we look at the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ, this is a QQQ. You can see after a big run up, you're starting to see consolidation at the top here. And this is looking to get heavy as sellers are emerging in this market. And when you overlay the VIX, now Goldman's call is a VIX only gets up to here where this red line is suggesting if you look at the last time that happened it created a big buying opportunity for investors to take the next leg higher here a breakout in the vix would be that catalyst the problem is it would leave investors without any dry powder to take advantage of it we're going to show you a better way to hedge it than even goldman suggests because hedging against extreme moves requires that investors assess a potential downside expectation and the hedging costs because long puts or calls as tail hedge is effective in cases of low option prices relative to large drawdown expectations. But the challenge here with any form of portfolio insurance, you risk the chance that if the market doesn't go down, you 
lose your insurance, that is a problem, but the risks here are fairly high because if there's any disappointment in earnings or any projections that future earnings will be bad amidst a low volatility environment and machine selling, well, we could see an accelerated move to the downside in rapid fashion. But a better way to do that would be to take part of your portfolio and put it in places that are already down. And how do you do that? Well, we give you the tools through our CTA Momentum Time Pro Reports. Here's our trade results all the way through March 8th. We put out 34 trades. None of these were duplicates. Now, between each report, we saw 34 trades, 26 up, eight down. That's a 76% win rate with one trade alone, enough to pay for your whole report. We hear that from subscribers all the time. Steve, I signed up for your free trial, and in one month, I paid for the whole year of subscription. That one of those trades is up 14%. You do the math, that'll pay for your whole year of subscription. Now, what do you get for that? You get CTA Timer Pro, which looks at the machine position. We show you when there's a dislocation, when the machines are max short because we run a historical overlay. We show you when they're mispositioned. That gives you a huge opportunity. We give you our daily signals in addition to all of our other signals, along with the videos highlighting how to run these trades. And the best part is we give you a free month when you sign up. Our, our my competitors, they give you seven days. Why a month? Because I know in a month you can pay for your whole subscription. How about those of your technical traders? Well, the mistake you make is you get in late, you get out early, we fix that problem. We take all those technical signals, we aggregate them together, we run a proprietary signal on top of that, and that's called Momentum Time Pro. We give you those daily signals as well as, of course, a video on how to trade it. Again, we increase your probabilities. You don't need to hedge your portfolio with calls where you can lose your money, put your money in something you can make money in. And one place that won't be, well, that's China's property market. As you're about to see, that's going to unwind in a big way as Vanke sales dropped the most since 2018. Now, keep in mind, this is following China's big move to stabilize their property market. Remember, they injected stimulus into the banks. They'd actually made some adjustments to get people to go out and buy property. And yet we forecast that this wouldn't work. And sure enough, this happening amid mounting liquidity fears as February contracted sales fell whopping 15%. And here you see short wagers are up as their contracted sales again plunged 53% from a year ago. You wanna talk about a company that's headed into insolvency and bankruptcy. You wanna talk about an all banking crisis that could start in China. If there's any reason to hedge your portfolio, you've got the reasons. We give you the tools, links in the description below. Grab that free month, start making money trading, start hedging your portfolio now because the value of the homes sold by the company Get this, the whopping 28%. Now, nobody thinks that can happen here in the US. We're gonna make the case of why we're seeing the early signs of a repeat of the global financial crisis black and later in today's show. As some of Vanke's long dated US dollar bonds have plunged below 50 cents on the dollar, indicating investors see a high risk of default. Well, that's no surprise there. Even Moody's downgraded the company to junk territory earlier this week and warned, warned of further cuts because this company is headed into bankruptcy. Of course, we know the banks have lent to them in a big way along with other property developers. It's only a matter of time before the dominoes start to fall in China and Beijing is unable to prop them up. And next thing you know, goes the banking system and that will roll markets all over the world. In fact, bearish wagers on Vanky's shares have soared more than 14% of their free float in Hong Kong, making it one of the most shorted stocks in Asia, most likely as long investors start to try to cover their positions and take advantage of shorting the stock to try to give them some dry powder to buy at the bottom. We'll show you a different way. Just use our tools. Buy stuff slow. We have a fantastic hit rate, 76%. Can you imagine that? That is game changing. Even the best traders only get around 50%. We give you the edge because Goldman CEO says he's going to take one of the biggest, craziest risks in this bank's history. At least that's our opinion, because he's optimistic about 2024 as the markets rebound. And what we're suggesting is Goldman's going to be begging the government in a big way for a bailout. I'll show you what they're up to because Goldman's chief executive, David Solomon, says he's optimistic this year about his firm and expects to reap gains from a rebound in capital markets activity. Now, what is he suggesting is people are going to come back, buy things like stocks and real estate and do deals, and that's going to be very profitable for their bank. So profitable, 
He wants to get in early on the trade as the bank will focus on his two core businesses, global banking and markets, as well as asset and wealth management. The concern is going to be, of course, what they're not saying they're about to do. The CEO noted the cost of capital now is material higher following years of easy monetary policy, which he said markets are adjusting to. We don't think that's the case at all. I think we're just kind of in this kind of calm before the storm period because here's what they're up to. He reiterated comments about the U.S. economy proving more resilient than expected, even as we continue to see unemployment claims tick higher, at least people staying on unemployment. Though he said inflation is likely to be stickier than markets anticipate. The Solomon said that CEOs tell them that economic conditions for consumers at lower income levels are getting tougher, leading to changes in spending patterns. And this is a bad sign because as the bottom people in any economic pyramid start to lose their spending power, that means they cut off back their spending and it slowly flows uphill until it gets worse. The idea that this is going to trickle down isn't going to happen, but Goldman's going to bet big on this which I think is going to lead them to a bailout in the next crisis as they are set now to resume bets on U.S. property as other investors, well, they're warning of more pain. And if you can believe this, Goldman Sachs is going to resume actively investing in U.S. commercial property this year because they perceive the market is bottoming out. Its real estate head said, while other investors said the market downturn has further to run. And if you look at the case where you see periods of rising continued claims, where well, that is the sticky issue, not so much inflation, and you have a big push from work from home, one of the things you don't need is a lot of office space because that means companies are going to continue to lay off. Space is already an issue now because many buildings are even at half capacity. But Goldman wants to snap them up early. We think this this is a problem because Goldman's going to be sitting on some massive, expensive buildings that they're going to lose money on in a big way. Of course, that means the government's going to have to bail them out like they usually do. But prices on U.S. offices and other commercial properties have fallen sharply in the face of higher interest rates, soaring vacancy rates that have outpaced other countries since the pandemic. And that's Goldman's bet that the Fed will cut rates a little bit and values will stabilize. I think what they're missing here is the fact that the U.S. economy is not in good shape. And in fact, if you're looking to convert these buildings to residential space, that takes years. It takes a lot of time. The question is, does Goldman have the money to weather through this? If they put their money where their mouth is and go buy a bunch of buildings, my guess is they're going to be taking a huge hit what do you think weigh in the comments below because the reason is a combination of interest rates coming down which will not have much of an effect we feel the market is bottoming out and because we're starting to see a floor in prices set by buyers who are in the market and that just because people are coming in and buying something doesn't mean they're right and that is the challenge here everyone believes that the u.s economy now has plateaued and is only going to go higher from here they believe this is indeed the bottom of the soft landing what they're missing out on is we're not done yet and every move lower in an economic cycle it goes in stages it's slow at first and then all of a sudden it hits at once and plunging real estate values have raised concerns about a wider financial spillover should banks have to realize large losses on their property loans. And this is the issue I'm raising for Goldman is they're going to speculate on the commercial real estate market at a time when they should just wait. If you're looking to take a big risk on a big asset, wait till the fire sales begin. The issue here is they think there's a turnaround. We know that's not likely to happen. Regulators were pointing a clear focus on commercial real estate exposure of banks and good reason because the city executive said the lenders were more accommodating to investors than during the 2007-2009 global financial crisis because they had higher capital buffers. Meanwhile, others were also keen to play down comparisons with the global financial crisis because they don't want to admit that if they take this risk or if they're sitting on this risk, that it could be a wipeout event for many banks. One of the challenges we're facing right now is the bank term funding program has ended. That means banks have to pay back, start paying back all those pandemic loans. The question is, where are they going to get the cash? Are they going to turn to the Fed? Do they have it? Are they going to have to sell assets? The banks are in dangerous shape here. Goldman thinks it's opportunity. We think it's an opportunity to lose.
Even Blackstone's jumped in on this as they say it's time to buy real estate as prices at the bottom as competition to buy discounted assets hasn't been that great. Well, it shouldn't be because they're not at a low yet. That's how you know when you see things at a bottom, there is a fever of people wanting to buy them. We're not there yet. The perception is so negative and yet the value decline has occurred. So when you get into this bottoming period, that's when you want to move, he said. In fact, that is a dangerous position here because as I'm about to show you, the U.S. housing market is not at a bottom. In fact, it's looking like it's going to accelerate to the downside in a big way. Back, we just got this headline today as U.S. foreclosure activity now continues to see an annual increase because if you want to talk about a soft landing or a no landing scenario or economy that's rebounding, what you should not see is an increase of foreclosures. What you should see is the exact opposite, where delinquency rates come down, foreclosure rates come down, where people can restructure because they have the income, they have the assets to do it. But here we see from Adam, a leading curator of land, property, and real estate data, noted that there were a total of 32,938 U.S. properties with foreclosure filings or default notices scheduled auctions or even bank repossessions that's down 1% from last month, but up 8% from a year ago. And that's the key right now is, it's not a matter of that month over month change because 1% isn't a big number in this case, but it's up 8% over a year ago. So what this is telling us is that things for US households have not improved, despite what we continue to hear that yes, they're getting wage increases, that they're better off, that they should be, inflation's come down. We continue to note that hours worked is shrinking it has not been keeping pace. Their total compensation growth is not where it needs to be. And against high debt service costs, households are getting squeezed, particularly those who have lost their jobs and have gotten stuck on unemployment. Because again, despite the fact that the government says there's tons of jobs out there, there really aren't. And if there were, all these people would have jobs. They wouldn't be facing foreclosure. Those numbers now only getting ready to increase because as Adam notes, the annual uptick in U.S. foreclosure activity hints at shifting dynamics within the housing market. Everyone says it's time to buy. Well, maybe this is just the beginning of the time to sell as these trends could signify evolving financial landscapes for homeowners propping adjustments in market strategies and lending practices, meaning banks are not gonna lend as much. We continue to closely monitor these trends and comprehend their complete effect on foreclosure activity. What that means is there's going to be a lot fewer buyers in this market. And that is the challenge here because without buyers, these homes go into foreclosure, the economy continues to slow, more people continue to lose their jobs. But don't worry, the Fed's coming to the rescue. The problem is, Many people don't believe it's going to matter at all. The Fed is seen sticking with three 2024 cuts despite higher inflation. We'll hear from the Fed next Wednesday with growth, jobs, and inflation all too hot for comfort. Now, that statement doesn't even make sense because if the economy was growing, we would not see an uptick in foreclosures. That doesn't make any sense. In fact, if Goldman was going to come out and say, look, we're buying commercial real estate, we're doing it because we see these buildings are starting to attract more tenants. We're seeing people come in wanting to lease space. We're seeing those who have space bring in more employees. They didn't say that. They just think the prices are at a bottom. And then why would they say, look, we think the marketing markets can unwind here a bit and you need to protect your portfolio. None of this makes sense if you believe the economy is strong. But if you think we're at the beginning of a downturn, well, that could happen because the Fed isn't, isn't in a position to cut rates in the near term. We know that's true. We agree with the chief international economist there at ING. And most forecasters don't think the Fed can declare victory just yet. Although expect on Wednesday, Fed Chair Powell to echo what he said on 60 Minutes, echo what he said in front of Congress, that they nailed this one, they stuck the landing, they got it. In reality, only 27% agree with former Vice Chairman Alan Blinder's assessment that the Fed has already achieved a soft landing for the economy, while 73% disagree. You can note me as one of those who disagrees. How about you? What do you think? Do you think we nailed the soft landing? Do you think the worst is yet to come? In my opinion, based on what we're seeing around the world, we're only at the beginning of where we're headed into the next crisis. And with that, I'm Steve Van Meter. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being fans. Bye now.